kind of a, it's sort of a, I know obviously I know the episode because I outlined them, so it's like a matter of what you thought would be the most efficient on your end. You're going to be the one point guard in those things. Yeah, so. I think we just teed up, let, let Larry do his thing, and then jump in where you, where you can. And... Cool. All right, I'll be, I'll be really, it's going to be an exercise for me and being really concise because I, I, you know, you got two people that could run on here. I want to yeah. make sure that we get there. Well, it'll take two of us to handle Larry anyway, so. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Permission to record. It's permission to record. <laughs> nice. I love it. We're getting that, documented. Say permission to record. <laughs> I'm good. Permission. I just assume everything's being recorded all the time anyway. So. The hack on a phone call with a VC is, do I have permission to record my my portion of the conversation? Because they can't say no. They have to say yes. But then you asking that question just shows that you're just a giant stud. So whatever you say, you could just be like, I licked my dog's face to make it clean. Like, there's nothing you can do to lose credibility. So long as you say, do I have your permission to record my portion of the phone call? Mm. And so now you're like, wow, this person is like a force. Because I'm only going to ask questions that I know the answers to. In a, in a gently guiding kind of way. I want to hear your problems. Mm. But I want to also establish that I take notes and I'll plot forward. It's the biggest hack to start a conversation because then they're just like, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> and then you're, and then you're now that guy who texts AM five minutes away. AM here. AM ready. Wrangling. Dinosaur whispering. Get it. Why, why would you tra- Why would you record what the PC said? You want to record what you say because now it's like the person who takes notes at a meeting is your deadly. So, so long as you put pen to paper, you become immediately deadly. And so, when you whip that out, you're like, hey, can you repeat that real quick? Because it was important for me to remember. And and I've taken these notes. Can you initial to make sure that you said 215 at Capital Factory? Can you go ahead and initial right here? <laughs> you see where we're going, right? You initial that we said 215. Sure. Now you've signed. Now you've signed something, and then you get two more initials, and then you won't sign a contract. But you'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get the feeling that you're gonna want to follow up. And so that's deal momentum. Because you're doing initial, like that's why you initial here, initial here, initial here, and then you sign away all your rights. Because that's a formula that a lawyer uses to sign away your rights. Nugget. First nugget of the day, right there. It took three minutes. So what is zero to zero point six? I know that's what we're going to talk about, but I don't know. I don't know what. What is that point six? Uh, six hundred k. Six hundred k. Or six hundred million, if you're talking Peter Thiel's language. Yeah. So Peter's got a book with Blake Masters called Zero to One, and it's a problem because in the book Zero to One, he actually doesn't explain how to get to a billion dollars because nobody knows except for this guy how Peter got to his first billion. So he's teaching you how to go from zero to one billion. He doesn't know. I know. Other people don't know. And the book doesn't talk about how to go from zero to one billion. Go from just zero to 0.00006 billion, aka 600K, by engineering your own first tranche of money. So your milestones of how do I get from zero dollars to 600K and you think the milestones would be 6k 60k bam you're at 600k it turns out all your milestones are in and around zero dollars getting off of zero Mm -hmm. in the way that you guys did ute week you're immediately off of zero because you're like it's ut you're djing the api of ut and south by southwest and so you forget that you struggled in and around zero because remember, we're also going to sell housing to VCs. We're also selling pizzas. So we got off of zero a bunch. And 
you can get off of zero super easily, but other people have never gotten off of zero. So all your inflection points are actually really close to zero. Whereas Peter has no clue. He also doesn't talk, Peter too, also doesn't talk about how he got his first 600K, which is the Stanford Law Review. He changed one word. It used to be the Harvard Law Review. He changed one word to be Stanford, and he got his his UTE week. He got his signet he got his commercially viable hit. He got his first he got his first win is the Stanford Law Review. And what do we have? Have we gotten our first hit yet? And that's what zero to six hundred K is, is getting your first thing that you got credit for. And it's tongue in cheek because Peter, when he taught CS183, he never took Engineering 145. So like all genius dudes, skipped like a trillion steps. And I know who Peter's mentors are, and Peter forgot what he got taught by Mark McCormick. The four deployed engineering, that second three, I think, yeah. is sales. That's second and two. And one lighting. It is two, yeah. It is two. It is two. Yes. It's selling, and then moonlighting which combos in for the third second. Yeah, we talked on Sunday. There were about seven episodes that came out of that conversation. I took three of them because I had to decide what three I thought were most complimentary to our previous stack of episodes and that would really make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I felt that the moonlighting one was one that like we hadn't discussed that seemed really obvious to me. And then the sales one, like, we haven't done an episode in sales to my knowledge and I loved it. I loved I love doing a quick recording on this concept of that and I really believe it like I've seen no examples of like people like early stage company being able to hire salespeople successfully. Like, I mean, usually like someone in the company's got to be able to do the sales first, and then you know, and oftentimes I think one that wrote in my outline of the, the thing was like, if you can't sell, it's going to tell you one of two things, either and maybe both. A, you're not actually passionate about the product. If people are passionate, they can sell it no matter who they are, and B, it might tell you there's no market for it. So it, it maybe both. So it's like, it kind of lets you know, if you can't sell it, like usually if you can like, it's usually like if like, I've had the most nerdy, whatever you want to say, people make tons of sales in early stage businesses just because they knew it worked. They, well, they went to the freaking internet, they figured out to ask if they'd want it. And then someone's like, oh yeah, I'd want that. So like, if usually there's a good market for it or like, you know, you can reverse it and say, you know, how do you, not, how do you, how do you go be a good salesperson? There's a market for what you're selling and it's really, really easy. Or be you know like you're just like so passionate that you walk into a room and even if there's no market for it someone's like yeah i want that <laughs> sure you know you convinced me i want one of those you know i mean I, I i sold with the i sold my first company with the ladder i just walked around a conference and was like with the ladder with the with the ladder i was so passionate about fantasy football that i would just sell people on my twitter technology or any of the stuff and then I had enough conversations, people just eventually bought my stuff, and then CBS just liked me. That What's was a ladder? The, the ladder, like the second of the two things. I don't think there was oh, just the like a huge market. I think that I was just I so passionate. He was on a ladder. ladder. That's what he did. I just sold I my passion. He got up really high over people and started pitching them on a ladder. I think I just sold my passion. No, like, you can actually get into, and that's why I love puns and double entendre. <laughs> you can actually get into New York Fashion Week to go sell stuff or hang out or go crash shows just by bringing... A ladder because then you look like a photographer and they let you into everything with like the shortest ladder ever with the bands exactly I'm wrangling so zero to zero to zero point six is about getting your first 600k revenue not investment revenue, yes customers revenue. Like yes. first big validation point of like hey it's not even big it's like 60 bucks. I mean, it feels big. big it feels point. giant. You right. get so much confidence. Right. It's a dollar you hang up on the wall, but it's, it's a little bit. Bigger. And that dollar grows on its own the way that all things do when it starts to become valuable. Is, is 60 grand turns into like 20 mil in a GIF. And that's what happens. That's what happened to Peter, and he can't explain his first 600K. He can I like. I've read that book Zero to One like a couple dozen times. He never talks about how he got his first billion. He's already forgotten it. Uh, honestly, he actually doesn't know. <laughs> In the way he gets. Even well, isn't it the same thing? To a degree where like he doesn't know because he's forgotten. Like, like it's literally so beyond. It's so he's. 
He's got. He's had so much compile on you since that. You have to have. You have to know something to forget it. Yeah, so and he was he's in never flow. aware of how he was successful. Right. I think I'm trying to say the same thing. Is that it just, it just happened? But it's but it's ever so disgustingly dichotomously separate that it screws people, which is which is why people are going to continue to get screwed unless your podcast solves this problem. The problem is a billion question mark, and the answer is consciously, competently going to 600k and realizing that a billionaire is not, well, maybe this billionaire, but other billionaires aren't going to help you get to your first million. Unless they have some other reason to do it. Right now, nobody is, because actually, people are embarrassed that they had to first get their first million. Some people didn't, they just born with a billion dollars. Did what? Some people were just born with a billion dollars. That's actually not true. Who? Um, maybe not people like I me, mean, like the family that we're connected with. I mean, but it turns out like there's like five families who were born with a billion. Everybody else had to like go from zero to a yes. billion. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like it's it's less than one percent. Maybe 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 with inheritance, but no. But for zero to six hundred k, I mean. Fortunes, fortunes are always won or lost. And even with three generations of money, people always lose their money. Billionaires always, there's no such thing as generational wealth. And I, we're getting away from it. 600K. Zero to 600K. It doesn't have to be 600K. It could be 6K. 6K is actually almost as hard as 600K. It just depends on what you're selling, right? No, it turns out everybody just gets stuck at zero. And when you see, when you see everybody just stuck at zero, you see that 6K is actually right next to 600K. But from a common sense standpoint, you think that 6K is just 1% of 600K. But it turns out it's not 1%. It's 70, 80, 90% of the way there. Because people can't get off of zero. So why is it not zero, 0.1? Uh, because 600k is six tenths of the way to being a millionaire because the word millionaire actually demoralizes people they don't know that it demoralizes people but but everything about a million dollars is completely disempowering because it's so emotional and like oh if only my dad were a millionaire he wouldn't have fucked around on my mom and he wouldn't have abandoned me because he kept on fucking now I'm all messed up, and I'm a girl that Larry Chang is dating. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Different right? example on the podcast, but, but yeah, I get, but I get what you're but saying. It, but everybody does, because people are like, oh, air quotes, daddy issues, and that's kind of why, and you're like, kind of, you don't want to hear, oh my God, making a million dollars is actually that easy, because I wish my grandfather would have, they don't ever say their grandfather, it's always their dad. I wish my dad would have known this, so that way my dad would have been a dick. And then they don't want to do it because then they're uh, superseding uh, and excelling past the father, in which case they want to put the brakes on. And people have that too, where the wagon is coming. Which is why in the NFL and money, generational money, blah, 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 the wagon wheels come off when you surpass. So it's like making your first million, but you don't want to say million because people hate millions. So it's they do. Yes. They why is Nick the million. only one? Why is Nick the only one locked up? I'm kidding. Well, he's there. I'm I mean, kidding. he's got, he really brought it out there. He did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did, gave, he literally he did. gave me notes, so. Uh, he did. Uh, yeah, I did write the outline. <laughs> so. But that's why I pwned at you, because I know the work that you put in. <laughs> <laughs> I do some stuff sometimes. <laughs> All right, then the salesperson. Okay, so you gotta sell. Founder's gotta sell. Founder's gotta sell, and the founder doesn't owners. sell. And in our conversations, we can talk about how granted sales are important, but how do we get sales experience without initially having to cold call people? That's like lecture 11, if this were a 12, 20 lecture series, which it actually is lecture 11. The first time you sell person to person is lecture 11. The 
first eight lectures of CS183S get it? Peter Thielman taught sales, so I added an S at the end of his CS183, and I just solved all the stuff that he left off. 20 lectures live on YouTube. S and D are the same, sales and distribution. Distribution is a euphemism for sales. The first eight lectures, you practice selling without selling anything, talking. So we sold pizzas, and we put the sign up on a tripod, a little sticker thing with a number, and we said 10 bucks. We didn't say 10 bucks per slice, but like 10 bucks. Is that 10 bucks for the whole pizza? No, that's just 10 bucks for a slice. Now you're just answering questions and providing customer service. Oh, that was too much money. Well, sounds like this pizza isn't for you. <laughs> next pizza. Then next customer, please. And then other people buy it, and then you're just providing customer support. And then negotiating. Hey, we just bought five slices of pizza. Can we get the box? So it's about you got to put yourself in situations where you get to talk to customers and have those customers just set set yourself up. Which is slice of pizza, which is uh, hanging out a shingle. Would you like your smartphone programmed? Would you like me to hook up your Apple Watch? Would you like a glass of lemonade for twenty five dollars? and I'll program your remote for free. Would you like a car wash? Bad example, because people will actually make you wash the car. You don't want to wash the car. Will you uh, do a Mark Cuban shoelaces business? Like, would you like new shoelaces for 25 bucks? He actually has a post on that. He just put 25 bucks. And then they're like, no or yes. In which case, your sign would you like a burrito for 15 bucks after the bars please? If you Selling do, do that in a place where you don't have to chase them down. Exactly, and it like builds you confidence because then you're doing customer service right. because you can see how you sell something on eBay that you didn't make, obviously, because it's a used tripod. It's a power cord, a brawn power cord. You can rake people for a brawn power cord. You can charge over a hundred bucks because people can't Google. A dude who wants to spend 350 bucks for a shaver can't Google anything because they're too busy cashing checks. But then now their charger's burnt out and they can't Google their, their model number because brawn power cords are different. And so therefore, the, the benefit of loading something up on eBay and then providing customer service. Can you read a FedEx tracking bill to tell the customer your package is two stops away? Can you wrangle a package that somebody overpaid for? Can you sell it first and then go buy it? Because you don't buy 10 of them or a thousand of them and then go sell them. You sell one and then you go buy it. 703-0458. Better cash flow. The part number is 703-0458. The Braun Power Cord. My dick. Why do, why do people pay so much for the power cord? Because the shaver used to be made in Germany. Those were great. And the new ones that are made in China, they're great, but just not as good. So then you buy the Chinese one, you're like, I miss my shaver. And then you have your shaver, and then you lose your shaver. You lose your power cord when you go on vacation. So the, the authentic ones are just And they kept it. And they kept it, but they're like, now I can't charge my shaver. Okay. And then so you're like, would you like to spend $150? And people are like, man... Ten dollars for a slice of pizza sure is a lot of money. Want to pay the one fifty for a charger? Mm, okay. Love the charger. It's a great thing. It's seven zero three zero four five eight. And then you just take seven pictures, you slap that shit on eBay, and you're like, I can't believe I'm gonna buy this thing for twenty bucks. Receive it and then package it. And then some people they're like, Oh, I didn't know I had to ship it. People will say this to me. I'm like, You sold it and you didn't think you had to ship it? Like, who, how did you think your customer was going to get it? Uh, I'm like, are you high? I'm like, you have to buy it, you get it, and then you put it in a new package, and then you ship it. People literally are like, I didn't know that. I'm like, did you think I was going to do it? You're going to activate a problem-solving mindset. <laughs> or if you would have told me to do it, I actually might have done it for you just because I'd be like, oh, my God. You're so selfish. What a baller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
All right. Cool. Sales is sales is good. On. I mean, that's, sales is a great one. Yeah, that's a lot to talk about there. We'll hit some, hit some, and key then points. and then selling a party, selling an after party, because you don't have to sell a prototype. You can sell the after party to Capital Factory Seven and Nine party, and you would do it at nine oh five to nine fifteen in the lobby of the Omni at the restaurant with two balloons. Look at that Ferrari thing. That sign is like, I could have brought a sign. We could go put a beta business sign right next to it. You could put a beta business Love sign it. right next to it. Sponsor their party. Just which, like is, over here. which is actually one of the things to, to, to sell, air quote sell, which is a Sinecade sign at a conference. So a Sinecade sign shipped to a conference it's less than a hundred bucks. It looks like a five hundred dollar sign. It's one of those sidewalk signs. That looks, it looks it oh, looks yeah. significant. Right. And then the uh, the foam core signs. Mm -hmm. It looks significant. Mm -hmm. So if you ship it to like Omaha for College World Series or Y Combinator Demo Day Computer History Museum Mountain View or whatever, like that sign is significant. And so. You just hang your sign out there saying, look, uh, Slurpees are free if you download my app or whatever. Whatever. Free cheeseburger if you download the, the Whataburger app. And now you have gamified downloads. That's how I initially handed out Bitcoin is this place called Cream. Cookies rule everything around me. I should have just gone with crypto rules everything around me because Bream... People are like, I didn't get Bream because Bitcoin rules everything around me. Where you uh, get a Bitcoin, you get an ice cream sandwich if you buy a Bitcoin or you know, prime the pump. I thought it was a type of ice cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah See, everybody did. I should have just kept it as cream. Crypto rules everything around me. Because then people are like, what's crypto? I'm like, you know, Bitcoin. But then we called it Bream. But then it's maybe good because now you can actually Google when I got into Bitcoin by giving somebody a hot dog. For them to sign up. What year is that? Somebody... <laughs> <laughs> you can Google it. You can Google it. Just don't. Okay. okay. And, and then so, moonlighting. Moonlighting by continuing, if we're in the crypto example, but moonlighting like a dozen different ways. You can sell Bitcoin to people that don't have Bitcoin, you can sell Satoshis. So, if they buy an ice cream sandwich, it's a Satoshi. Exactly, a one one hundredth of a one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin, and so you can sell people Satoshis. If they buy an ice cream sandwich for three bucks, tell them that you'll give them three thousand Satoshis, which is about a buck. But you're 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 now promoting something else that you didn't do. And that's the safest form of moonlighting. And so, just like UTE week, if you're a kid, you can literally do UTE week in the fall. I mean, Texas might initially sue you, but I'm giving you carte blanche to use it because I came up with UTE week before. <laughs> no, that's funny, right? <laughs> because some UT administrator is gonna think suing a kid is gonna be a good idea, and then when you get sued, that's actually what you want. Because now you're going to become famous, or at least notorious. And then, did you use your notoriety to do something immoral? No. Like, I'm doing UTE week to help people. And that's what the kid would do. And so that's and, and moonlighting. So, and the, but moonlighting is, how would you define moonlighting? Exactly. That's a great start, is how do you define moonlighting? Which is a side hustle that becomes a big time business or, a, or a, a job that you do at night that's over and above what you're required to do. Peter Thiel had Stanford Law Review. Josh Bear had Skylist at Carnegie Mellon. And people forget that those things used to be side hustles. Well, before he had Skylist, he just was paid to answer the forums. Yes, under, under Josh Bear... Uh, Josh Bear contracting services for fifty bucks for fifty bucks a fucking month. Yeah, something like that. 
Yeah, and the, that's actually how to get off of zero, is that you're gonna need to put your own name on the line. It never would have worked if it would have been info at skylistprecursor.com. Like people want to know that I'm paying 50 bucks to a person that I can call if you ditch with my $50 million and go to Mexico. So like Josh is going to need to know, like I need to know where Josh is. And a lot of people who can't get off zero want to dabble trying to get off of zero by not using their real name. And so when they don't use their real name, they don't get off zero. And so it's a inflection point of not. And then if people want to get off of zero, text me, hey, I intend to get off of zero. And that helps because a lot of people are like, mm, I don't want to even email somebody that I don't know because they might keep me accountable. Go. Will you initial here that you intend to get off of zero? It's taking a first action. Like that's a, the ninety percent of things. Like you do your first action, and then all of a sudden they start to spiral. Like it's amazing how quickly all of a sudden it's like, oh, now I can do this. Oh, now I can do this. Oh, I actually didn't want this anyway. Actually, it's never, never made sense the whole time. Like once you get one like reality grounding action, the rest of them start to all of a sudden be like. Whoa, like it's amazing how many other things start to become really, really clear um, once you kind of get yourself grounded in the It's reality. amazing how long entrepreneurs can go the other way and get stuck, get stuck in their thoughts and not, not go to zero to one. I, mean, I do it all the time, and so do get, a lot of people. They get stuck people. at zero. They literally get stuck at zero right. because they're like, I need more information, more knowledge to compile prior to my even trying one thing. Right. No, and they need perfect data. execution. Perfect product. Bothers me. Uh, perfect product. You just take moonlighting. You take two products that exist and you DJ them together to solve one problem. So if you're gonna moonlight, you can just take two APIs or hear a problem. Start with the problem. Hear a problem and then just go scrape two APIs. Like every problem you can solve with one API. Definitively, three APIs. But if, but that's the best way is to listen for a problem, which is why paper notes critical. You almost are like an MVP extremist. Yes. Like far, yes. Like ultra MVP. Yes. Yeah. Because Eric Ries, his next book is not lean startup or long term capital management, which is actually a 1998 disaster. You know about a stock market fund? Long term capital? Yeah. yeah. Wait, we're gonna have a lot of we're gonna have a lot of those again soon. So we're we're getting well, hold on. So so he has actually has a stock market for long term. But yeah, we are gonna have a lo lot of that because there's this company called Long Term Capital Management who did a macro implode. And they oh, did yeah, man. Oh thanks. And he did a implosion and he called it a, literally an implosion which is long-term capital management it imploded in 1998 and almost like sent america to like you know a death spiral but eric Ries lean startup with a massively minimum viable product his next company is going to be called cross the chasm from the right because why do zero to eighty percent when all the cheesecake is in the Air quotes last mile. And so Eric Ree's last mile for MVP is you, this is shit's like 15 years ahead of Silicon Valley, which is just sell something that exists slightly differently. There's two APIs. Sell it differently or uh, build something that's slightly different? Just take the two APIs and just solve a real person's problem. Take two APIs or just one API. Usually it just takes one API where people don't realize, oh my God, this shit exists. It turns out all the shit already exists. Old dog, new trick type thing? It's all, uh, it's just really all the existing shit. All the shit already exists. It may not run fast enough, it may not blah, 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 but it exists already. Like landing a rocket ass first is the largest example of, oh my God, that shit was innovative. But I land shit all the time ass first. <laughs> Oh 
my god. And then back to Elon Musk is he could land shit but first because the first thing he sold was Yellow Pages ads on the internet. He literally funded landing a rocket ass first by selling Yellow Pages ads. Zip2. And then he sold x.com as a URL to, to convince Peter T side hustle. Peter Thiel and Max Levchin and be like, hey, I got X.com. You guys have Confinity. We should combine forces in super innovative shit that nobody likes with more super innovative shit that nobody likes. And me and Luke are like, Luke Nosek are like, uh, you know that that's two things of shit that nobody likes, right? And they're like, no, that's not true. And then we did an API using Microsoft Word Doc. At the time, attaching a Microsoft Word doc to an email was innovative, because that was amazing. Because before email was just email, like you could attach shit. So then we just attached a two-page Word doc to email from email dollar amount. Of course, it was hidden, so that way you couldn't just email and generate free money. But then, Confinity wasn't fucking working, and neither was X. But Elon sold. Peter and Max a URL a one letter URL they still never used it when was the last time you go into a one letter URL because it was easy to remember Peter Elon sold the way that Elon became a founder of PayPal which he's kind of not is he sold them a URL that he then later bought back <laughs> like it's it's not ludicrous, but it's cliche because he sold, after you're done selling yellow pages, now you can sell bullshit. And that one letter URL let him make another arguably couple billion. But you he's can't- He's in the right, he's still in the environment for himself. He's still in the environment and he hustled because after he was right. done slinging that bullshit, he actually went to Omaha to do a debit card to make money swaps legal by powering it on a debit card and then while he was in Omaha doing stuff Max and Peter fired him <laughs> really yeah and then Peter's like you're gonna fire me I'm the only guy working here and then wait the, Peter got fired or Elon Musk got fired Peter. oh I'm sorry Elon, Elon Musk got fired yeah. Elon Musk got fired Elon Musk got fired and he wasn't pissed he's like okay be well I'll do my next thing now that was genius that was genius because he could have screwed Max and Peter. And Max and Peter are lucky that. But he, he still had shares. He still had shares. They didn't do a full recap. He didn't get totally screwed. But you're CEO and you're the only guy like running point to get shit shipped, okay? You shouldn't get fired. Sure, yeah. But that's actually how to get fired for, which is if you're not getting fucked on your moonlight, if you're not getting fucked on your moonlight, that means you're not important enough. So you actually kind of want to get screwed in your moonlight, which is kind of counterintuitive, but that's your first big thing in business because when you do get screwed and you say you're welcome, you actually benefit dramatically. And Peter got a 10X bump after he got fired. Maybe a million X, who knows? But he's- Peter did or Elon did? I'm sorry, Elon did. Elon, Elon did. I keep mixing up Peter and Elon. But good job asking questions. Gotcha. Why is Nick the only one asking questions? Well, listen, I'm getting ready. I'm <laughs> I know, you're not allowed to talk. Good question asking. <laughs> but yeah, Elon. Elon. Why can't yeah. you talk? <laughs> just, this is the prep. You could totally talk. He's just, oh, this uh, is the prep? I didn't even see you put away your laptop. I was uh, like, this is recording. I mean, you might be recording. But yeah, yeah, this, this, is, this is just music, get myself pumped up and this is my thing. Yeah, I need some coffee. What time is it? Yeah, yeah. Two fifty. All right, let's let's take a break and nice. meet up meet up on eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Yeah, eight cracked. Eight floor. I think they might have a little webinar, so we just have to be quiet. I'll meet y'all in the lobby though. I'm resting. I gotta get. Gotta get my, I made one hundred and ninety dollars while we were sitting here. So my shit, I sold them back for it. They just, they come and pick up your shit and then they give you a price for it. It's probably too cheap, but they gave me the service of not spending time selling that. So. Counterintuitive to our episode we're recording, but we did make money from it, so that's great. What is back to get on camera? It's a thing I found online that like 
they just come and pick up your shit and then they'll give you a price for it and they'll give you an Amazon gift card. And oh, that's perfect. I found for a bunch of stuff that I don't want to like, there's a bunch of stuff I do sell that like is easy to sell on eBay, but if something like, if something falls in the category of it involves me doing research and then yeah. running the risk of the person being then dissatisfied. Get the pictures. Because on eBay, my sales, the sales price of the expensive items I sell on a expensive baseball card or something, the, the ratings are important. So I don't want to go sell something where someone's going to give me a negative review either, because I think that that would be like a majorly costly yeah. experience. So I try to specialize. So on eBay, I sell a bunch of like, but if, it's, if, it's, if it's a sports card, I sell it. If it's like a piece of memorabilia, I sell it. But if it's like, in some cases, like this was like a watch I never wore. I was like, I'm just gonna let them take it. And if they wanna give me some money for it, cool. Like, I don't know where I'm gonna make substantially more hey, on that. Flip it. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff on, like from our old place and went. Oh, right. stuff on I mean, there. No, I like that. I like I like backflip because you have to put you have to build out a playbook on how to sell a couch. You're only gonna sell one couch every. What do you mean, Charles? Seriously, they already know how to sell everything, right? So yeah, that's yeah. A, this is my thesis.